All right, so a lot of you guys asked me to make a video um, just in reference to trying to solve for our restrictions. So when, when they ask us to state your restrictions. So this video will not be locked, it's not mandatory. You can skip through this uh, any way that you want. And I'm just gonna go through a few examples uh, and kind of talk about a little bit more. So when we have fractions, there is only one number that we can never have in a fraction and it can only be in one place. We can never have zero in our denominator. We can have any number that we want in our numerator. So we can have any number possible from negative infinity to positive infinity. We can have any number that we want in our numerator because any number in there out there can be divided. The only restriction that we have is we can never have zero because if we have a thousand dollars and we want to divide it because when we're dividing, we're breaking it up amongst equal groups to people. And if we want to take a thousand dollars and divide it amongst zero people, nothing happens to the money. It's not, nothing's being done to it. So we cannot divide by zero. So when we have a fraction, one of the things that we need to look for is what value of our variable, only the variable will make our denominator equal to zero. Anything else can occur. Any other number can occur. It's just our denominator can never be zero. So if I give you this fraction three, over top of 4x. So when we think about this, we have 4 times x. We know that we cannot have 0 in our denominator. That is the only thing that we cannot have happen. Any other number in our denominator can occur. So we look and we say, well, we have two numbers, 4 and x, and they're being multiplied. And x represents a number. Remember, we can substitute any number that we want in for x normally in our domain. We can do anything. So it represents any number. But we're trying to say if we have two numbers, 4 and x, and we know that they cannot equal to 0, well, the only way for two numbers to multiply and equal to 0 is if one of the numbers were 0. So either this number has to be 0 or this number has to be 0. Well, we know that 4 is not 0 because 4 is 4. So the only way then that this four times X could be equal to zero is if X was zero itself, because you cannot multiply two numbers together that are not zero and get zero as your answer. So if we're multiplying two numbers, four and X, and we're trying to figure out, well, what value does X have to be in order to make this zero? Well, we know one of the numbers has to be zero. Sorry, I just had to pause the video and step away. So I don't know what I was saying before this. So let me just, Go back over it again. Remember this, you can skip around. So if we have a denominator 4x and we know our denominators cannot be zero, we need to figure out what value of x will make it equal to zero. And that's what x can't be. And if we have two numbers being multiplied that equal zero, one of them has to be zero. And since four is four and four, it can't change to be zero. That means if they were to equal to zero, x had to be zero. But since we don't want zero, it's the only number we can't have, we say X cannot equal zero. And that is your final answer for this for restrictions. We're not gonna do anything else. We're only going over restrictions. All right, just a couple more examples. All right, so once again, we have a fraction. We need to know what will make our denominator equal to zero because the only thing that we cannot have, we can have any number we want but we, in our numerator, but we cannot have zero in our denominator or it's undefined. So we need to look at our denominator, X minus two. And if you're unsure, what you can always do is set it equal to zero because we want to know what value of X will make it equal to zero. So if you set it equal to zero and solve for X, so we have X minus two is equal to zero. So we add two, we have two, then we get, that means X is equal to two. So in order for X minus two to be equal to zero, which is what we're doing here, X would have to be two. But since we do not want zero, that would make it undefined. It's the only thing that we cannot have. We need to then state our restrictions that X cannot equal to two. Because if X was equal to two, we would then get two minus two in our denominator, which then we would get two, um, three over top of zero, which is then undefined. So we're stating our restrictions. We're trying to figure out what value that we substitute in for this variable, X, Y, Z, whatever it is, would make our denominator equal to zero. All right, so in the first one, we were just identifying just being multiplied. We didn't really set it equal to zero. We kind of just thought about it logically. This one, if you're having trouble, then you can just set it equal to zero and solve because whatever that is, in this case two, that's what X would need to be in order to make it equal to zero. But since we don't want X to be that value because we don't want X to be zero, 
we put does not equal. All right, one more example that we'll go through, and that's it for this video. And if you're still having trouble, please reach out, and I'll help you in any way possible. All right, now we have 3 over top of 4x plus 3. So remember, the only thing that we're not allowed to have in a fraction, once again, I'm going to say this every single time because we're only stating our restrictions, is we cannot have 0 in our denominator. It's undefined. So when we look at this, we say 4x plus 3. Hmm, what value of x would make this equal to 0? Some of you may be able to just solve this in your head without doing any work and say, well, that means the answer has to be negative 3 over 4. But some of you may not. And if you can't, it's no big deal. All we do then is set it equal to 0. Because we're saying, well, what value of x will make this equal to 0? And then the first thing we need to do is subtract a 3. We do a reverse um, PEMDAS because we need to undo what we, what we would have done in the beginning. So it would be 4x is equal to negative 3. Now that 4 is being multiplied to x, but we want to solve for x, we need to get rid of that multiplication. So divide each side by 4, and we would then get x is equal to negative 3 over 4. Now, if x were to equal negative 3 over 4, it would be equal to 0. But we do not want 0. It makes it undefined. It's the only value we cannot have. So when we're stating our restrictions, we would just simply say x cannot equal to negative 3 over 4. All right, that is it for this video. You're going to be allowed to skip around. It's not mandatory. If you still have questions, please ask.